Window covers are a must for camping in a van. They provide privacy, they block out light when you're trying to sleep at night, and help keep the inside of your van warm when it's cold outside and cool when it's hot. Over the years, I've made different sets of window covers. In my van tour, I briefly showed you the corrugated plastic ones stored under the bed. And earlier, I made a video of the ones I made from a felt flooring underlay. And for the first prototype van, I had simple cardboard ones. In this video, I'll go over all three sets and talk about how much they cost to make and the pros and cons of each. The first step to any window cover is to make templates of the windows. My method is to stick up pieces of paper until the whole window is covered. When I get to the curved parts of the window, I use smaller pieces of paper so it follows the curves better. And I make sure to use enough tape so that it holds its shape when I take it out of the window. It doesn't matter if the paper slides under the, the rubber at the edge of the window. At the end, I'm going to trace around it with a pencil to get the true shape. Be careful to unstick the little bits of tape that are on the glass so it comes off the window nicely. Afterwards, I like to add tape to the back side too to get a solid template that won't fall apart when you move it around. The first set I made was just before our first summer trip in a van that we rented for our first prototype. And they were made of corrugated cardboard. One side was painted black and on the other side I glued pieces of reflective emergency blankets that I bought at the dollar store. They did everything you could want them to do. The cardboard even added the tiniest bit of insulation. But cardboard is cardboard and condensation from the windows soaked into the paper and made it come apart. And since we stored them under the mattress, the cardboard also got crushed. So they worked, but they weren't very durable. On the plus side, they cost very little to make. Free cardboard, probably under $3 for a couple of emergency blankets from the dollar store. A can of spray glue costs about $15, but I didn't use the whole can. And some black paint. I already had the paint, but it would probably cost about $20 if I had to go and buy a liter of paint and a roller. That fall, I bought my own secondhand minivan, and we did as much fall camping as we could. I had to make new covers for the windows because the new van was a different model and the old covers were too small, but I was able to use them to make the templates. The cold fall weather put me in mind of trying to make insulated covers to keep the van warm. I researched different options, but lucked upon a roll of hardwood floor underlay. It's a synthetic felt that is waterproof and rotproof. It is made to provide soundproofing under hardwood floors. It had one reflective side, but I decided to glue more reflective mylar onto it to maximize the heat reflection. I spray painted the back side black, making sure to get all the edges. It took way more paint than I expected, so after the first ones, I switched to a roller and black latex paint. As soon as it's dry, you're ready to glue. I glued these with Super 77 spray glue. But in the cold weather, they started to delaminate. A viewer suggested number 90 spray glue, which is stronger. I did some experiments to see what worked best, but more about that later. These first ones, I only put glue on the felt, and I spread the mylar out on a table and kind of rolled the cover onto it. It came out quite wrinkly, but that doesn't stop it from reflecting the heat back into the space, but it doesn't look as pretty as it could. To get nice clean edges, I trimmed the excess mylar away with a sharp utility knife. The flexibility of the felt really helps to get a snug fit. They're easy to put up, but I found that I should have added tabs to the corners to help get them back out of the windows. The felt doesn't let any light through. As you can see here, all the dome lights are on inside the van, but no light peeks out. We did test them out in the winter once at a provincial park near us that had a special winter camping weekend. We had an electrical hookup, which allowed us to have an electric space heater, which was really necessary because it was about minus 20 that night. The window covers insulated a lot compared to the plain glass. The inside of the covers felt warm, not icy cold like the bare windows. But the climate here in Canada is tough. The weather goes quickly from warm enough not to need them to too cold without a heater. And once you add an electrical site and a heater, the window covers don't make that much difference. The other downside of these covers is that they are quite bulky and heavy. When they're under the mattress and we don't need to set them all up, they make quite a bump under the bed. The flooring underlay felt is great, but it's hard to find. 
So if you know of a similar material that's easier to find, please let me know. For me, they didn't cost too much. Just the emergency blankets and the paint. And we used two cans of glue. I paid $11 for the big roll of felt, but if you need to buy it, I don't know how much it would cost, and it may be hard to find. The third and most recent set of window covers is more like the first set, but this time they're made of coroplast, and this time I remembered to add tabs. I found black coroplast at my local hardware store, but if you can only find the white one, you could paint it with a paint formulated to go on plastic surfaces. I managed to cut them all from one sheet. Having the other set of covers to use as templates helped a lot. I used black gaffer's tape, but black duct tape would work too. I curved the ends of the tape so it would be less inclined to get caught on things. I put the tabs on before the reflective mylar so they would be underneath it and not show from the silver side. The mylar blankets I used this time were bought on Amazon. It was a pack of 10 blankets, so I had plenty to work with, but I also get better at not wasting any. I cut pieces that were a bit bigger than the coroplast to make it easier to line up when gluing. To be able to spray the glue onto the mylar blanket, I taped it up to a large board. This is one of the glues I tested. It is made for gluing upholstery and goes on with this weird loopy spray. In the end, the Super 77 was just as good as the fancier glues. The important thing was to spray both sides. This time I got help applying the glued mylar to the window cover. Each person takes one corner and keeps the mylar taut so it doesn't touch the gluey side of the window cover till you're ready to smooth it down. Working from one side while the other person holds their end up away from the surface, you start smoothing the mylar into place. You can fix small wrinkles as you go, but if you get a big wrinkle, it's best to just smooth it down and move on. As you can see, the one done with the help of a second person came out nearly perfect versus the one done solo. But both are fine for their purpose. When trimming the excess mylar, I had to be careful of my little tabs this time. So I taped them to the back side of the panel before starting to spray the glue. You can see on the edge that these are much thinner and will lay flatter under the mattress when not in use. The covers for the two sides of the van are symmetrical, so they can be switched from one side to the other if you want the silver layer on the outside instead of the black. For the cover that goes in the big liftgate window in the back, I partially cut a notch to go over the hump where the wiper motor is. This way I can flip it if I want the silver side on the outside. The tabs make taking them out much, much easier, especially on windows like this one that don't open. The advantage of having the silver side out sometimes is to keep the heat out of the car if it's parked in the sun. For these back windows, they go in just like the others when I don't have the mosquito screens in. But if I do have the mosquito screens in, it's possible to put these ones in from the outside thanks to the little window mechanism. I make sure I have the side I want, in this case the black towards the outside. Then I fit the slot onto the post of the window mechanism and rotate it into place. Once in, I can see if there's any gaps and I can push it until it blocks the window completely. To take them out, I just push down until the tab comes out at the bottom and then I can pull it the rest of the way out. I made these for our trip last summer. They are lighter to handle, easier to store, they're completely waterproof and have held up well so far. I bought the emergency blankets as a pack of 10 and they worked out to about $1.25 each. And I may have used two, maybe three to do the whole set. Plus I used more spray glue since I was doing both sides. So I maybe used two cans of glue. And the Coroplast itself was $36 for a four by eight sheet of the black. The felt ones are like the Rolls Royce of window covers. The fit is smoother and they insulate better to keep the inside warm when it's cold. But they're much bulkier, which makes them harder to store 
and kind of harder to manipulate also. I consider them our winter covers, which really means early spring and late fall around here. And the chloroplast covers are the summer ones. I hope this gives you a few options depending on your needs and budget. The cardboard ones are a great place to start and the work is never lost because you can always use them as templates to make better ones when you're ready. Thanks for watching and happy camping.